Hello guys! Welcome to my channel, Atori JMF Vlog. Hope everyone is doing great. Good day, Miami Sai. This video is a continuation of our lecture on criminal procedure for criminologist licensure examination. Pero bago natin ipagpatuloy ang ating lecture, please do not forget to subscribe on my channel and hit the notification bell below for you to keep updated on our new lectures and video. Please also share our channel to all your relatives and friends. So let's start our lecture. Our first rule is Rule 110, Prosecution of Offenses. Let us first define what is a criminal action. When you say a criminal action, it is one by which the state prosecutes a person for an act or omission punishable by law. How do we institute criminal action? Criminal action shall be instituted as follows. Number one, for offenses where a preliminary investigation is required pursuant to section 1 of rule 112 by filing the complaint with the proper officer for the purpose of conducting the requisite preliminary investigation. Ano-ano ang mga cases na kinakailangan ng preliminary investigation. Those that require preliminary investigation are cases punishable by 4 years, 2 months, and 1 day or higher. Again, preliminary investigation is required for offenses where the penalty prescribed by law is at least 4 years, 2 months, and 1 day or prisyon correctional in its medium period without regard to fine. Sakop nito ang mga kasong may kaparusahan na pagkabilanggo na apat na taon, dalawang buwan at isang araw o mas mataas pa base sa provision ng Section 1, Rule 112 of the Rules on Criminal Procedure. Paano ka magsasampa ng iyong complaint? By filing the complaint with the proper officer for the purpose of conducting the requisite preliminary investigation. Saan mo ipafile? You have to file the complaint with the city or provincial prosecutors for the purpose of of conducting preliminary investigation. Isasampa mo ang iyong reklamo sa office of the city or provincial prosecutor. Pagkatapos, ang piskalya ay magkakandak ng preliminary investigation. The term proper officer refers to officers authorized to conduct the requisite preliminary investigation. Namely, the provincial or city prosecutors and other officers as may be authorized by law. Their authority to conduct preliminary investigation shall include all crime cognizable by the proper court in their respective territorial jurisdiction. So let's proceed. Second mode of instituting criminal action under Section 1, Paragraph B of Rule 110. For all other offenses, by filing the complaints or information directly with the Municipal Trial Court and Municipal Circuit Trial Court or the complaint with the office Office of the prosecutor. In Manila and other chartered cities, the complaint shall be filed with the office of the prosecutor unless otherwise provided in their charter. That is the provision of Section 1, Paragraph B of Rule 110. Those which do not require preliminary investigation or cases punishable by less than 4 years, 2 months, and 1 day. Ibig sabihin, sakop nito ang mga kasong may kaparosahang pagkakasahang kabilanggo na apat na taon at dalawang buwan o mas mababa sa apat na taon at dalawang buwan. Saan mo ipafile? File the complaint or information directly with the Municipal Trial Court, Municipal Circuit Trial Court or Office of the Prosecutor. Sasampa mo ang complaint sa Municipal Trial Court, Municipal Circuit Trial Court or Office of the Prosecutor. O isasampa ng fiscal ang information sa Municipal Trial Court o Municipal Circuit Trial Court. Note, however, that in Manila and other chartered cities, the complaint shall be filed with the office of the prosecutor unless otherwise provided in their charter. Ibig sabihin, sa Manila at iba pang tinatawag na chartered cities, kinakailangang isang pamo ang complaint sa office of the city prosecutor, maliba na lang kung taliwas dito ang isinasaad ng kanilang charter. Under the rules on summary procedure, the filing of criminal cases falling within its scope shall be either by complaint 
or by information. Yung mga cases na sakop ng Rules on Summary Procedure ay nai-discuss na natin sa second part ng ating lecture sa Criminal Procedure. So, para ma-refresh kayo sa topic na ito, ay maaari ninyong balikan ang ating lecture sa jurisdiction ng Municipal Trial Court, Municipal Circuit Trial Court, o Metropolitan Trial Court. So, tuloy tayo. Ang mga kasong govern ng Rules on Summary Procedure naman ay maaaring isang pa by a complaint or information. Provided, however, that in Metropolitan Manila and in Chartered City, such cases shall be commenced only by information except when the offense cannot be prosecuted de officio. Sa Metropolitan Manila at sa Chartered Cities, isasampa mo ang complaint mo sa Office of the City Prosecutor at pag-aaralan ng fiscal ang reklamo mo kung may sapat ba itong basihan para ihanda niya at magsampa siya ng information sa korte. So sa Metropolitan Manila at iba pang tinatawag na Chartered Cities, ang pagsasampa ng kasong sakop ng Rules on Summary Procedure ay magsisimula sa pagsasampa ng information sa hukuman ng Office of the City Prosecutor. Maliban na lamang kung ang kasong isasampa ay mga kasong tinatawag na private crime o crimes that cannot be prosecuted de officio o mga crimes classified as crimes against chastity tulad ng adultery, concubinage, acts of lasciviousness, seduction, at abduction. Tandaan din that the complaint or information shall be accompanied by the affidavits of the complainant and of his witnesses in such number of copies as there are accused plus two copies for the court's files. If this requirement is not complied with within five days from date of filing, the case may be dismissed. So wag kalimutan, kung magsasampa ka ng complaint, itong table na ito ang kailangang tandaan kung saan mo isasampa. Sa Manila and other chartered cities, for cases with preliminary investigation sa Office of the Prosecutor. Sa Manila and other chartered cities, for cases without need of a preliminary investigation sa Office of the Prosecutor. Sa Manila and other chartered cities, for cases under the rules on on summary procedure sa Office of the Prosecutor. In provinces, excluding chartered cities for cases with preliminary investigation sa Office of the Prosecutor. In provinces, excluding chartered cities for cases without need of a preliminary investigation either sa MTC o sa MCTC. In provinces, excluding chartered cities for cases under the rules on summary procedure either sa MTC o sa MCPC. Naiintindihan ba, Miami Sai? Okay, very good. Let's proceed, Miami Sai. What is the effect of institution of criminal action? The effect of institution of the criminal action is that it interrupts the running of the period of prescription of the offense charge unless otherwise provided by special laws. So kapag naisampa na ang criminal action, yung tinatawag na pagtakbo ng prescriptive period ng offense ay mai-stop na maliban na lang kung taliwas dito ang isinasaad ng special penal laws. So the rule is filing of the complaint with the prosecutor's office already told the running of the prescriptive period even if the offense is for violation of a special penal law. The moment na nagsampa ka ng complaint sa prosecutor's office, stop na ang pagtakbo ng bilang nung tinatawag natin sa criminal law na prescriptive period ng offense. Note, however, that with regard to suspension of prescriptive periods for violations of ordinances, the running of the prescriptive period shall be stayed on the date the case is actually filed in court as held by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Saldivia versus Reyes. Under Section 9 of the Rules on Summary Procedure, the complaint or information shall be filed directly in court without need of a prior preliminary examination or preliminary investigation. The case shall be deemed commenced only when it is filed in court. Whether or not the prosecution decides to conduct 
a preliminary investigation. Ang mga kasong sakop ng Rules on Summary Procedure ay hindi kinakailangan ng preliminary examination o preliminary investigation at maituturing na naisampana ang criminal action the moment na ang complaint o information ay maisampa sa korte. This means that the running of the prescriptive period shall be halted on the date the case is actually filed in court and not on any date before that. So ang pagtakbo ng bilang ng prescriptive period ng offense sa Rules on Summary Procedure ay mai-stop lamang sa oras na maisampa ang complaints o information sa korte. Moving on, the general rule is that the filing of information is discretionary to the public prosecutor. Nakadepende sa fiscal kung isasampa ang information sa court o hindi. Kung sa tingin niya ay walang probable cause, ang complaint, i-dismiss niya ang kaso at kung sa tingin niya ay may sapat na basihan ng complaint, ipa-file niya ang information sa korte. Subalit, may mga pagkakataon na may probable cause ang isinampa mong kaso pero i-dismiss pa din ng prosecutor. Ano-ano ang mga posibleng remedies na maaari mong gamitin? So what are the remedies of the offended party if the prosecutor refuses to file an information? Number one, file a motion for reconsideration with the office of the city or provincial prosecutor. Mag-file ka ng motion for reconsideration o MR na tinatawag within 15 days mula nang ma-receive mo ang resolution ng office of the prosecutor. Second, file a petition for review with the Secretary of Justice. Mag-file ka ng petition for review sa kalihim ng kagawaran ng katarungan within 15 days mula nang matanggap mo ang resolution ng office of the prosecutor. Dito, may options ka kung kailan ka magpa-file ng petition for review within 15 days pagkatanggap mo ng resolution ng office of the prosecutor o o kaya naman, mag-file ka muna ng motion for reconsideration. Then, antayan mo yung panibagong resolution ng Office of the Prosecutor sa motion for reconsideration mo. At kung denied, saka mo i-avail ang petition for review sa Department of Justice. Third, institute administrative charges against the erring prosecutor. So, pwede kang magsampa ng kasong administratibo laban sa prosecutor. Fourth, file criminal action against the prosecutor under Article 208 of Revised Penal Code for negligence to prosecute or tolerance of the crime. Magsampa ng kasong kriminal laban sa prosecutor para sa paglabag sa Article 208 of the Revised Penal Code. Yung tinatawag natin na prevarication o negligence or tolerance in the prosecution of offenses. We file civil action for damages under Article 27 of the the Civil Code for failure to render service by a public officer. Magsampa ng civil case laban sa prosecutor under Article 27 of the Civil Code of the Philippines o yung Republic Act Number 386. And finally, file an action for mandamus in case of grave abuse of discretion. Magfile ng petition for mandamus kung malinaw na may grave abuse of discretion ang office of the prosecutor. Note, however, that the general rule is mandamus is not available to compel prosecution. The writ of mandamus is not available to control discretion. It is a matter of discretion on the part of the prosecutor to determine which persons appear responsible for the commission of a crime. However, the moment he finds one to be so liable, it becomes his inescapable duty to charge him therewith and to prosecute him for the same. Ibig sabihin, ang mandamus as a general rule ay hindi mo pwedeng gamitin remedy laban sa prosecutor dahil nasa diskresyon niya kung sino ang mga dapat sampahan ng kaso. Subalit, kung malinaw naman na may probable cause at hindi niya pa rin isinampa ang kaso laban sa isang tao, malinaw na may grave abuse of discretion as an exception to the rule, mandamus may lie. 
So what is the reason behind this rule? Because in such a situation, it loses its discretionary character and becomes mandatory. Nagkakaintindihan po ba tayo, may amisay? Very good. Moving on. What are the common requisites as to the form of complaint and of information? Complaint or information must be, number one, in writing. Second, in the name of the people of the Philippines. And third, against all persons who appear to be responsible for the offense involved. So what is a complaint? When you say complaint, a complaint is a sworn written statement charging a person with an offense subscribed by the offended party, any peace officer, or other public officer charged with the enforcement of the law violated. So that is the definition of a complaint under Section 3 of Rule 110. Who are the persons who can file a complaint? First, offended party. He is the person against whom or against whose property the crime was committed. Iba pang tawag sa offended party ay complainant o aggrieved party. Second, any peace officer like police officers or agents of the National Bureau of Investigation and third, other public officers charged with the enforcement of the law violated like internal revenue officer for violation of the National Internal Revenue Code customs agent with respect to violations of the Tariff and Customs Code. When you say complainant, it refers to the complaining party in the prosecutor's office. So ano naman yung tinatawag na respondent? It is the opposite of the complainant in the prosecutor's office. Ibig sabihin yung kalaban ng complainant, respondent. Plaintiff, the complainant in a criminal case filed in court. So the plaintiff in criminal cases is the people of the Philippines. So question, what is the effect if the criminal case is not placed in the name of the people of the Philippines? So the answer is, this is a minor defect. A defect in form which is not sufficient to dismiss the criminal case but may be cured at any stage of the trial by simple amendment of the information. So kung ang criminal case ay hindi nakapangalan ang plaintiffs sa people of the Philippines, minor defect lang yon At hindi sapat na dahilan upang madismiss ang kaso at ito ay maaaring baguhin by simply amending the information. Another question, what is the effect if the complaint is not under oath? So the answer is, the absence of oath is only a defect in form and will not affect the jurisdiction of the court. So kung halimbawa, ang complaint ay hindi under oath, minor defect lang din yon at hindi makaka-apekto sa pag-exercise ng jurisdiction ng hukuman. So what is the definition of information? When you say information, sabi ng Rule 110, Section 4, an information is an accusation in writing charging a person with an offense subscribed by the prosecutor and filed with the court. Ano-ano ang mga requisites ng information? So, let's discuss the requisites of information. First, it must be in writing. Number two, it must charge a person with an offense. Number three, it must be subscribed by the prosecutor. And fourth, it must be filed in court. Sino-sino ang mga may kapangyarihan na magsampa ng information sa hukuman? So, the persons authorized to file information are the following. First, city or provincial prosecutors and their assistants. And second, duly appointed special prosecutors. Sample tayo ng mga board exam question. The public prosecutor, also known as the fiscal, is the proper authority to subscribe in which of the following? Letter A, complaint. Letter B, affidavit. Letter C, information. Letter D, subpoena. So let's repeat. Question, the public prosecutor, also known as the fiscal, is the proper authority to subscribe in which of the following? A, complaint. B, affidavit. C, information. D, subpoena. What is your answer? The answer is letter C. Information. Very good. May amisay. Another question. Who acts as the lawyer of the government or state in criminal cases? A. Public prosecutor. B. Private prosecutor. So there are only two choices. I'll repeat. Who acts as the lawyer of the government or state in criminal cases? A. Public prosecutor or B. Private prosecutor. What is your answer? The answer is letter A. Public prosecutor. Correct. Okay? Next question. The 
principal law office of the Philippine government. So what is the principal law office of the Philippine government? A. OSG or Office of the Solicitor General. B. DOJ or Department of Justice. C. FLAG, F-L-A-G or Free Legal Assistance Group or D. IBP, Integrated Bar of the Philippines. Again, so we are asking the principal law office of the Philippine government. Choices. A. OSG or Office of the Solicitor General. B. DOJ or Department of Justice. C. FLAG or Free Legal Assistance Group or D. IBP or Integrated Bar of the Philippines. What is your answer? The answer is letter A. Office of the Solicitor General. Very good. Miami side. Another question. Prosecution or prosecutors are under letter A. Executive Department. Letter B. Legislative Department. Letter C. Judicial Department. Or letter D. Constitutional Commission. Again, prosecution or prosecutors are under what department? A. Executive Department B. Legislative Department C. Judicial Department or Letter D. Constitutional Commissions The answer is Letter A. Executive Department Okay? Another question for this topic Your offenses falling under the jurisdiction of Municipal Trial Court or MTC and Municipal Circuit Trial Court or MCTC Prosecution of the case is done by Letter A. Filing a complaint in the fiscal's office or letter B filing a complaint directly with the court. Again, for offenses falling under the jurisdiction of Municipal Trial Court or MTC and Municipal Circuit Trial Court or MCTC, prosecution of the case is done by A. Filing a complaint in the fiscal's office or B. Filing a complaint directly with the court. So, what is your answer? The correct answer Answer is letter B. Filing a complaint directly with the court. Okay? You got it? Good job, Miami side. Moving forward, what are the distinctions between a complaint and information? Okay? Ano ang pagkakaiba ng complaint sa information? As to maker, in complaint, offended party, peace officer, other public officer charged with the enforcement of the law violated. Whereas sa information, public prosecutor only. Another distinction, as to oath, in complaint, Complaint, a complaint must be sworn to by the makers, meaning by the offended party, by the peace officer, or other public officer charged with the enforcement of the law violated. Whereas in information, it need not be sworn to. Okay? Bali now. Another distinction, as to where filed. Complaint may be filed either before the prosecutor's office or directly to the court. Whereas an information is filed only in the court. Okay? Bali now ang pagkakaiba ng complaint sa information. So, let's discuss forum shopping. What is a forum shopping? Forum shopping is defined as an act of a party against whom an adverse judgment or order has been rendered in one forum of seeking and possibly getting a favorable opinion in another forum other than by appeal or a special civil action for certiorari. It is prohibited because it trifles with and abuses court processes, degrades the administration of justice, and congests court docket. A willful and deliberate violation of the rule against forum shopping is a ground for summary dismissal of the case and may also constitute direct contempt as held by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Orpiano v. Tomas on January 14, 2013. It is a certification in a pleading that the party has not commenced any other action or filed any claim involving the same issues in any other court, tribunal, or quasi-judicial agency. So that is the definition of forum shopping. Okay? Ulitin natin. Ang forum shopping ay pagsisampa ng parehong kaso involving the same subject matter sa iba't ibang tribunal o hukuman o maging quasi-judicial agency at ang purpose nito ay baka sakaling makakuha ka 
ng favorable judgment sa kaso sa ibang tribunal, hukuman, o quasi-judicial agency. But keep in mind that a certificate of non-forum shopping is required only in civil cases. This certification is not required in criminal cases. However, a false statement in a certificate of non-forum shopping may be a ground for perjury. Ang rule is required ang certification against non-forum shopping sa mga civil cases. Hindi ito required sa criminal cases. Subalit, ang maling deklarasyon mo sa certification against non-forum shopping ay pwedeng gamitin laban sa taong nag-execute nito at maaari siyang maging liable sa kasong perjury. Okay, malinaw? So, let's take a break, Miami side. Naway may mga napulot kayong bagong kalaman. Pero bago tayo magpaalam, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe sa ating channel and hit the notification bell below upang lagi kayong updated sa mga bagong lectures at videos at i-share sa mga relatives and friends ninyo. Please also visit and like our FB page, Attorney J.M. Ferraro. So maraming maraming salamat, Miami side. Have a good day.